So last night, Harry tried to sarcastically joke about never being scrutinized about his ginger hair and taking life advice from his Reiki healer today as he made a gag-filled video for a charity stand-up comedy event for U.S. veterans in New York. And it certainly seemed like he was trying to snub his father again because Harry didn't bother wearing the coronation medal that was given to him by Charles. He did wear four British military medals, including three that were given to him by his late grandmother the Queen, and also a Royal British Legion poppy on his suit jacket during a monologue that was filmed at his home in Montecito. The first question I have for Harry is, who does he think he is representing while he's in America? It can't be the royal family he represents, it's certainly not the people of the UK or the Commonwealth, so who does he really think he is? He has become such an embarrassment to himself and his family, and really to anybody with common sense. He represents gingers because he doesn't represent anything except for Meghan at this point. How pathetic. He's nearly 40 years old and he thinks he's going to be able to make a living by acting like an idiot. Harry loves to brag about his military experience. What military experience? While fellow soldiers were risking their lives trying to defend Harry, he was sitting in the bunker playing video games. There is no way they would risk him being killed or captured because the PR for the Taliban would have been so great. He didn't even meet the qualifiers for the first Jubilee medal because he had not served long enough. But because it was his grandmother in charge, he was given them. Now the other brother also didn't qualify. Just look at all the medals for their grandmother's birthdays. Many people who served in the military in the UK have a very big problem with the idea of Harry representing them. So UK military, they promised to serve the queen or the king and the country. Many people suffered injuries doing exactly that. Well, Harry decided to be a traitor. He turned his back on his queen, his king, and his country, and then started trashing them to anybody who would listen. So I understand, many military personnel do have a big problem with Harry representing them, as they should. I can't believe that Harry continues to do this stuff, though. Does he not realize everybody is laughing at him? People in California also got really pissed at him and Megan when they walked through a U.S. veteran cemetery to honor them, supposedly. Harry has no business talking about U.S. veterans. I mean, people only knew that he did it because the wreath was denied him in London, and that was probably why Megan put him up to this little scheme. And of course, let's talk about the timing of that stupid video. They had to release it right before Harry's father, King Charles, was supposed to set off to give his first king speech at the state opening of Parliament in London. I mean, it's always about timing with those two. If the spotlight is on somebody else for their good work, they're going to do whatever they can to get attention for themselves. And it doesn't really matter if it's negative attention. All that matters is that they steal some of that limelight. That's what the Katy Perry concert photos were all about. They were trying to distract us from William's Earthshot event. Everything with them is so carefully calculated. That's how petty they are. We see this from both Meghan and Harry constantly. Anytime the royals are doing something special, they've got to release some new announcement. Meghan made an announcement that she was pregnant when Beatrice or Eugenia, I don't remember who, was getting married. I mean, they have to do everything they can to make sure the spotlight is never completely off of them. Naturally, many fans have also been criticizing the couple. One fan said, I served my country and the late queen in Afghanistan for eight years. Some of the things I saw were harrowing, and I now suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. I can assure you that Harry was not involved in any frontline action, and my comrades could also confirm the same. It was never about numbers. It was about protecting the innocent and vulnerable and surviving. It hurts that this guy can stand with his medals on his chest, gloating about right and wrong, yet never reach the true front line. I lost many comrades and had comrades disfigured and scarred for life. This fan continues saying, I was also let down by my own government when it came to aftercare. I am now living in Ireland with my beautiful wife and still wake up in the horrors. How dare Harry and his wife strut their stuff and try to preach on their greatness tucked away in their mansion being protected. Two fools talking gibberish. Another fan said, The medals worn were gifts from our late queen celebrating her various jubilees. They are not medals for serving in the forces. You will note that several male members of the royal family have them. Harry's wearing them to portray an image. He preaches about having values of honor, integrity, togetherness, and solidarity. And yet, as we have learned, he possesses none of those values himself. 
Another user agreed, adding, he didn't earn those medals, his military job was handed to him. Does he really think we believe the British government would allow anything to happen to a serving royal? I don't think so. In fact, he was probably a liability to all those he served with. I do wish he would just go away. Uh, well, I don't know that it's any consolation, but at least Harry is not enjoying his new life in America. The fact is, he looks trapped in all the photos we see of him. He looks like Megan's prisoner, and like he doesn't know how to escape from her clutches. Honestly, I don't think this is the first time that Harry has wanted to escape Megan, or perhaps even tried to escape her. Let's remember what happened with Tom Inskip's wedding. Megan wasn't invited, and what did she do? Well, she decided she'd just crash the wedding, and then when she sunk her claws into Harry, she did not let go. I mean, she's got some nerve, and I think most decent people just don't know how to deal with somebody like her. And she counts on that. Unfortunately, I think Harry has worn out the welcome mat with his nasty behavior and his lies. At this point, how could anybody trust him? So if he's trapped, well, so be it. He has made his bed, he needs to lie in it. He attacked his family, he burned all the bridges back home, and he has shown himself to be such a nasty individual. There is nowhere left for him to turn to. At this point, surely he is regretting at least some of his behavior. I suspect that somewhere deep down inside, Harry wants to go back home. I don't believe he's enjoying life right now. I think he wants his family back. He has said that he really misses Christmas with his family. And I think that on some level, he does want to meet with his father and talk things out. When he heard that he wasn't allowed to stay with his family and that he had to make arrangements in advance, I do think that upset him. I think he regrets ever leaving. And it is sad, because he is the one who destroyed all this. Now, Megan can ignore her family. She can cut them out. It doesn't bother her a bit. But I don't think Harry's the same. He wants his family back. As for what Megan wants, I mean, who knows? I don't even think she knows that. And what is Megan without Harry in the connection to the royal family? She's a fraud. She even said it herself once upon a time. I'm such a fraud. That story about the dish detergent, that was completely made up. And her father fed into that little story. He just let her believe that it was her and her alone who changed that dish soap commercial. Well, we can add to that the trauma of having divorced parents and a mother who wasn't around. And we get Megan. Megan also attended an all-girls private Catholic school. So I would guess most of the people she attended school with were wealthy, and most of them probably came from a stable two-parent household. All of the above is a breeding ground for narcissistic behaviors. She even said herself that she wasn't necessarily pretty, which probably fed this desperation to have a new nose, to have better teeth, straight hair, to look like somebody she's not. Even though Megan is very self-centered, it's not because she loves herself. She hates herself. And that's why she has to put on a front. She's been doing this her entire life. And I'm sure this is something that the late queen, William Catherine and Philip saw in her. This desperation to be praised, it wasn't lost on them. And they tried to warn Harry, but of course he didn't listen. The queen even told Meghan that she could continue with her acting career if she wanted to. She probably wanted to keep Meghan away from the inner workings of the monarchy. But Meghan said that she was ready to hit the ground running. Obviously, neither Harry nor Meghan could take a hint, and so look at where we are today. People tried to help Meghan and Harry. They tried to warn them, but they didn't want to listen to anybody. And now they're blaming everybody else instead of the only people who are to blame, which is themselves. The Queen, William, Catherine, they could see all this coming from a mile away, and everybody else could too. I mean, just remember what Meghan said. No one asked me if I'm okay. That told us all we needed to know about this horrible individual. And you, what do you think about this issue? Please let me know below in the comments. Don't be afraid to like and share this video, and don't forget to click that subscribe to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye, and I'll be back to see you all tomorrow.